Subhanallah, here we are today about to tell one another Eid Mubarak, Taqabbal Allah minna wa minkum. That fast, Wallahi, this Ramadan, I think has been one of the fastest Ramadans that I remember. It was just like yesterday. It feels like we're in the first couple of days and here we are about to say goodbye to Ramadan. And many times in our khutbas, in our reminders, we remind ourselves of the virtues and of the rewards that we are gaining through our fast. But today, I want us all to reflect on the essence and the hikam and asrar, the secrets and wisdoms behind many of these actions that we have been performing throughout this blessed month. Because the objective of Ramadan is not just to get this iman rush, to get this boost, to get our sins forgiven, but it comes to train us for how we need to be and what we need to survive as believers all throughout the year. One of the clear lessons that comes to us of Ramadan, in Ramadan is the reality of time and the reality of life and how quickly life is passing us by, how quickly the time is going. Just yesterday, well, it feels like we started Ramadan and here we are on the 23rd about to say goodbye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded of this, reminded us of this with two small words in the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayyamin ma'dudat, that it's a set amount of days. And this is the reality of our life as well, that the life that we have, it's also a set amount of days. And from the hikmah, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that we don't know when it's all going to come to an end. Al-Imam Al-Hasan Al-Basari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he used to say, Ya Ibn Adam, innama anta ayyam, fa'idha dhahaba yawmuk, dhahaba ba'aduk. O oh, son of Adam, you are but days. So if one of your days goes, then some of you has gone. Every time a day finishes, part of our life has finished. That's a chapter in life that's finished. And these days that are going by quickly in Ramadan are reminding us of this. The blessing of the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. And that's why our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih al-Bukhari, he reminded us of two of the greatest ni'mas. Two of the bl most blessed ni'mas and blessings that many people have but don't realize. Ni'matani maqboonun fihi ma kathiru min al-nas that there's two blessings that many people don't realize that they have or they don't take advantage of it. As-sihatu wal faragh having good health and having free time. When we look at the reality of our time, my dear brothers and sisters, as the Prophet wasallam told us in the hadith about the five things that we will be asked about yawm al-qiyamah before our feet move from the place where we're held to accountability the first thing he mentioned alayhi salatu salam that we will be asked about وَعَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِي مَا أَفْنَا and on his life that which he did with it what did you do with the time that Allah has blessed you with and this is a reflection that all of us should have as we come to the end of Ramadan what have we done with this blessed month and then after we answer that question we reflect and ask ourselves what have we done with this blessed life? Life is a blessing. It's a ni'mah from Allah. What have we done with it? A man came to Al-Fadil ibn Iyad, rahimahullah ta'ala. Al-Imam Al-Fadil asked him, Kam umruk? How old are you? He said, Sittuna sana. I'm 60 years old. Al-Imam Al-Fadil, he said, Subhanallah. He said, 60 years you've been traveling to Allah and you're about to reach your destination. I mean, it's about to come to an end. Because as we know in the hadith, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, A'mar ummati ma bayna sitin wa sabi'in. That the ages of my ummah is between 60 and 70. Meaning, 
Most people don't live much longer than that. So he told this man who had reached 60, you've been traveling for 60 years and it's about to come to an end. So the man, he said a statement that many of us say all the time, that many of us hear all of the time. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That we are to Allah and to Allah we will return. Al Imam Al Fudayl asked the man, What is it that you're saying? He said, I'm saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He said, Do you know its tafsir? Do you know its meaning? Do you know the meaning of what you're saying? He said, Fasurhu li. Give me the tafsir. Explain to me what this means. He says, Inna lillah. That we are to Allah, it means that we are abid, that we're an abd, we're a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un, that indeed we will return to Him. He said, if we know that we're returning to Allah, then we know that we're mawquf, that we will stand in front of Allah. And if you know that you're mawquf, you're going to be standing in front of Allah, then know that you're mas'ul, you're going to be asked. And he said, if you know you're going to be asked, فَلْيُعِدْ لِلْجَوَابِ لِلْسُؤَالِ جَوَابًا فَلْيُعِدْ لِلْسُؤَالِ جَوَابًا If he knows he's going to be asked, then let him prepare for the question and answer. You know you're going to be standing in front of Allah. You know you're going to be asked. Then prepare the answers from now. The man asked Al-Fudayl, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and pay attention to the answer, especially as we come to an end of Ramadan. He said, Malhila, what is the way? What can we do to save ourselves? He said, and it's very easy the solution, subhanAllah. He said, Tuhsin fi ma baqi yugfir laka ma mada wa ma baqiya. He said, To be good in what is left from your life, Allah will forgive you from the past. And what is coming for the future, inshallah ta'ala? As long as you strive, as long as you strive to obtain and to do good, Allah will forgive you from the past and forgive you, inshallah ta'ala, of what comes in the future. But if you don't try and you don't do the good, he said, then you're going to be held accountable for what was in the past and what's coming in the future. My dear brothers and sisters, from the lessons that Ramadan teaches us is to race and strive to do as many good deeds as we can as Muslims. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran, وَسَارِعُوا وَسَابِعُوا And to hasten and to race. فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ And race to do as much good as you can. All throughout the Quran, Allah is mentioning these ayat. In order for us to take advantage of the time and the opportunities that Allah has given us, and this is what Ramadan is teaching us. To raise to do as many good deeds as we can. Look at what we're doing in Ramadan. It's not just fasting. Look at our relationship with the Quran. Giving from the sadaqah. Making sure that we're focusing on the five daily prayers. Making sure that we're doing tarawih every night, not missing it. We're striving and doing as much as we can. And all throughout the Quran, when Allah talks about, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ And hasten to the forgiveness of your Lord and to the Jannah. All of us want to be forgiven. All of us want to enter the Jannah. Sari'u, hasten, race for it, strive for it. And the other verse, Sabiqu ila maghfiratim mi rabbikum wa Jannah. To race to the forgiveness of Allah and to the Jannah. You have to work for it, you have to strive for it. Every day, every night. And this is what Ramadan is teaching us, my dear brothers and sisters. It's not just the time to come, as we said, have the sins forgiven and then go back to like we used to be. We want to reflect on these teachings, on the essence of the fast, the essence of these deeds and what they're teaching us. SubhanAllah, look how we strive in Ramadan to protect our fast. To protect our fast and to protect our a'mal, our deeds that we're doing, all of the good deeds. We want to make sure that we, are, we don't ruin them. And this is from the teachings of the sunnah of our beloved Prophet wasallam. If somebody wants to quarrel with you, somebody wants to fight with you, somebody curses at you, what do we train ourselves to do? First of all, 
to not say anything back, to not to fight back. But we tell them, inni sa'im, inni sa'im. That indeed I'm fasting, indeed I'm fasting. But is this just something that is the way of the Muslim just in Ramadan? And then we change after Ramadan and we start to insult others. We start to use foul speech and to curse at others and to fight with others and to quarrel with others. Is this the way of the believer? Ramadan comes as to teach us this, to how to control our tongues. SubhanAllah, during Ramadan, even a drop of water. This is, how, this is how keen we are. We don't want our fast to be ruined. A drop of water, we, we might even take it out like this, making wudu, just to make sure nothing falls into the mouth, subhanAllah. Because we, don't, we want our fast to be accepted. We don't want it to be ruined, subhanAllah. We learn to control our tongues. Because what is the reality of the tongue? And what happens if we don't control our tongues? The Prophet wasallam told us about the karima. Hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. The karima, one word, that a person utters with this one word, la yalqi laha balan, but it's a good word, min ridwanillah. He speaks a good word from the words that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa yarfa'ahu Allah biha darajat. Allah raises him in the degrees, the ranks of good deeds because of that one word. And the other individual, yatakallam bil kalima. He speaks with just one word, utters one word. But what is this word? Min sakhitillah. From the words that are displeasing to Allah. La yunqi laha balan. He doesn't pay any attention to it. No big deal. Yahwi bihi fi jahannam. That this word will make him go deep into the jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. This is what the fasting is teaching us to do. Control your tongues. Be careful. When the Prophet sallallahu was asked, about the most deeds, the most deeds that will enter the people into the hellfire. What did he say, alayhi salatu wasalam? Alisanu wal farj. The tongue and the private parts. The tongue and the private parts are the main things that will make the people enter into the hellfire. And Ramadan is coming to train us, to teach us how to control our tongues. And how to control our private parts. In Ramadan, we control our tongue and we control our private parts from that which is halal for us with our spouses. So what about from refraining from that which is haram? My dear brothers and sisters, when we strive to make sure that our deeds are accepted during Ramadan, something amazing that we actually remind ourselves of the two shurut or the two conditions that must be met in order for our actions to be accepted. Any action that you do as a Muslim, there's two conditions. If they're not met, then the action won't be accepted. Whether it be your fasting, your siyam, your sadaqah, all of these different things. These conditions must be met. First of all, that you have ikhlas sincerity for Allah. And secondly, that you have the mutaba'ah, you follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ramadan is teaching us both of these. When we fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the siyam is one of the best ibadat, if not the best one when it comes to teaching us ikhlas, sincerity for Allah. How is that? Because when we fast, no one truly knows if we're fasting except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is true ikhlas. When I come pray in the masjid five times a day, they say, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Huh? Mawlana Saab, yeah? he's Saleh. He's from the pious people. He comes and he prays in the masjid. Why? Because people can see me. But when it comes to the fasting, who knows? I could have woke up this morning, had a big stack of pancakes, had an espresso, a big glass of water, and then come and talk about sabr. Huh? Who knows if I'm being honest except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This teaches us in class sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that drop of water that we make sure doesn't go too far back into the mouth so we don't mess up our fast. This teaches us in class sincerity to Allah. The mutaba'ah, following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the actions that we're doing during Ramadan. All of it is reviving the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we read more Quran, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read more Quran in Ramadan. 
when we increase in our generosity and our sadaqah, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be more generous in the month of Ramadan. When we come and we pray the tarawih, the night prayer, when we pray the five daily prayers in the masjid, we're following the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who would never miss one of the five daily prayers. Even when he was on his deathbed alayhi salatu wa salam, he tried to force himself to come and to pray in the congregation. And he would pray throughout the night until his feet would become swollen alayhi salatu wa salam. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is who we're following in Ramadan. Even when we break our fast, look at the implementation. We break our fast on the dates. Some brothers and sisters say, Wallahi, we don't eat dates any time during the year and we don't even like dates. But we eat them during Ramadan because it's the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It reminds us of ikhlas, sincerity to Allah and following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The fast is teaching us the importance and the outcome of sabr, patience. SubhanAllah, one of the great lessons that this fast is teaching us, it's training us to do, is to have sabr. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he described the sabr in the hadith in Sahih Muslim. He said the sabr al that the fasting is light. It lightens up the way for you. It makes things easy for you. Have patience. We're going to be successful in this life and the next. We must have sabr. And the types of sabr, three main types of sabr that we train ourselves to do is to have sabr, patience when it comes to performing the obligatory actions upon us. That which Allah has made compulsory upon us. This needs sabr. When it comes to refraining, the second type, refraining from that which Allah has made haram for us, this is also a form of sabr. And this is what we're training ourselves to do in Ramadan. Look at these two. And the third type, which is to have patience when it comes to dealing with the difficulties that come from the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in Ramadan, we're training ourselves to have sabr. So when a difficulty comes to us, we can handle it. And wallahi, thumma wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, if you can fast 16 hours a day in this heat, you can do anything, wallah. That means you're somebody who has strong willpower. I remember speaking to some of the non-Muslims in Ireland, and some of them thought we were crazy to follow this religion that you have to fast 19 hours to 20 hours. But other ones who looked at it, they said, you know what? They said, this is amazing. This is beneficial. This teaches you strong willpower and desire. My sensei told me the same thing. He said, if you can do this, you can do anything. If you can fast for 19, 20 hours, you can do anything. This is what Ramadan comes to remind us of. To overcome our desires. How many times, my dear brothers and sisters, now in Ramadan, that we wanted to do that which is haram. We wanted to turn on the TV and watch what, that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan came to us, but we refrained. We overcame the desires. And if we strive to overcome the desires, not just in Ramadan, but all throughout the year, we strive and we struggle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist us. He will help us. As He promised, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَا نَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبْلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That those who strive for us, indeed we will guide them to our ways. You'll be guided to the correct path, to the straight path. And then Allah said at the end of the verse, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And indeed Allah will be with the doers of good. All we have to do is make the effort. If we strive, Allah is going to assist us. He's going to help us in all of the aspects in our life. As we strive during the month of Ramadan to obtain the taqwa, the main objective mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ All throughout the Qur'an, Allah mentions the benefits, the virtues of the taqwa. And something to benefit us after Ramadan as we continue, inshallah ta'ala, to recite the Qur'an and to benefit from the Qur'an outside of Ramadan, is that we have a project, an objective. Let's make our first khatma after Ramadan. As we read the Qur'an from the beginning and the end, the beginning to the end, to reflect on the meanings of the taqwa, on the virtues of a taqwa. I prepared something the other day 
quickly, just looking in the Quran, I came up with 15 different virtues from the taqwa in the Quran. I remember a lecture I gave in the past, it was more than 20. But this one quickly I gathered from the Quran 15. If we go through, we come with any ayah where Allah talks about the taqwa, taqullah, al-muttaqoon, al-muttaqeen. Anytime you hear this in the Quran, whoever fears, and then you see what is the virtue that comes with the taqwa. This will increase us in our iman. And it will help us to strive to establish the taqwa just as we did in Ramadan, but all throughout the year. Because the taqwa, the consciousness of Allah and our actions, and this is what the taqwa means, to fear Allah and to be conscious of Allah, to know that Allah sees what we're doing. Why didn't you have that cup of coffee in the morning before going to work? You were tired when you woke up. You needed the extra boost. But you said, it's not worth it. It's not worth ruining my fast. That's the taqwa. That's the implementation. Because you know Allah can see you. Allah can hear what you're saying. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, all of these lessons, all of these teachings, is what we need to focus on as we strive down the path, as we come to an end, and remind ourselves of the importance of fasting and the importance of the Qur'an. Some of the main things that are taught to us in Ramadan, the fasting in the Qur'an as it came in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they will intercede, the fasting in the Qur'an, they will intercede for us yawm al-qiyamah. Fasting one day for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we get in reward? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in one of the narrations and Sunan Imam al-Nisa'i that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put between us and the hellfire masafat sab'ina sana, a distance of 70 years for fasting one day. And the other narration, khandaqan ma bayna samai wal ard that he will put between us and the hellfire a trench which is the distance between the heavens and the earth. Fasting one day for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fast nourishes the soul. The fast helps us overcome our desires. And this is what we need all throughout the year. And that's why fasting is prescribed all throughout the year. Because we need this fast. The Quran. What is the reality of the Quran? And I want us all to reflect on this hadith. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Al Quran Shafi'un Mushafa' Wa Mahilun Musaddaq. That the Quran will be an accepted intercessor or an accepted adversary, Yawm Al Qiyamah. It's either going to be for you or against you. As it came in the other hadith, Al Quranu Hujjatun Laka O Alik. The Quran will be evidence for you or against you. But pay attention to the ending of this hadith because many of us at the end of Ramadan. We return the Quran to the shelf and it gathers dust until next Ramadan. What is the reality of those who do not read the Quran? Those who do not act upon the Quran, do not contemplate on the Quran. There's one of two outcomes when it comes to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, made it clear in this hadith. He said, Man ja'alahu amamahu qadahu ila jannah. That whoever puts the Quran in front of him, meaning he reads it, he acts upon it, he reflects upon it, he puts it in front of him. He said, it will guide him to the Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then he said, alayhi salatu wa salam, وَمَنْ جَعَلَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ سَاقَهُ إِلَى النَّارِ That whoever puts it behind his back, meaning that he doesn't read it, doesn't contemplate on it, doesn't act upon it, puts it back on the shelf. Whoever puts it behind his back, he said it will lead him to the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from that, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabiya mustafa wa ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we mentioned in the beginning of the khutbah that Ramadan has come to an end. And that is the reality we all see in front of us. But alhamdulillah, we still have either with today either seven or eight days left. Depending on if Ramadan is 29 or 30 days. Meaning there still is time. There still is time, inshallah ta'ala, as they say, to go out with a bang. If 
We were from those who were striving, were successful in the beginning of the month. This is the time to continue. This is the time to work harder. And this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's one of the hikmas, one of the wisdoms from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he put the big barakah, the big blessings, and the big rewards at the end. That's why we always advise the brothers in the beginning, have your schedule, have your routine. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint, brothers. Because these are the days of the real amal, the real working, the real striving. It's in these days. And that's why in Sahih Bukhari, when Aisha radiallahu anha described what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do if the 10 days would come in, she said, Ahya laylahu, that he would stay awake during the night, searching for Laylatul Qadr, striving during these nights, staying awake during the night, and he will wake up his family. Wa Jeddah, he would increase in how hard he would strive during these nights. Wa shadda ma'zarahu. They say well, he would tie up the izar, meaning that he would refrain from his wife's. Obviously, he would be in i'tikaf during that time, alayhi salatu wasalam, so he couldn't go to his wife. But what's meant is that we focus, we isolate ourselves. And it's permissible, yeah, my, uh, dear brothers and sisters, and this is very important. When it comes to i'tikaf, you can, there's no set time for the most. This, this is the correct opinion of the scholars. There's no set time for the most or the less. If I come in for taraweeh and I say I'm going to sit until 12 o'clock, or I'm going to sit until after the qiyam, and I have the niyyah for i'tikaf every night, I get the reward for that. I get the ajr for that. We don't have to stay for the whole day. We can come in at taraweeh and we can leave after the qiyam. And we'll get the reward of being in i'tikaf, reading the Quran. This opportunity, we have to focus on benefiting from it. And as we end today's khutbah, my dear brothers and sisters, it's always important this time of the year especially that we remind ourselves of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about those who he made dua upon them. And pay attention to this because when the Prophet sallallahu makes dua upon someone, we know this is something serious because he's the one who was sent rahmatan al He was sent as a mercy to mankind. But he said, Ragam Amf, may the one be humiliated. And he mentioned different people. And from them he said, Man adrakahu Ramadan, thumman salaq qabla an yukfar lahu. The one who reaches Ramadan and then finishes before his sins have been forgiven. And that is because anyone who doesn't take the advantage of being forgiven during this blessed month is a fool. He's Ahmaq. A pure idiot. How many opportunities do we have? And excuse me for being blunt. But how many opportunities do we have in front of us? For, through our fast, through our prayer, through searching for Laylatul Qadr, all chances to have our sins forgiven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shackles for us the major shayateen. The major shaytans can't reach us. The doors of Jannah are open. The doors of the hellfire are closed. And every single night, as the Prophet ﷺ told us, Allah has utaqa min al nar That Allah has those who are freed from the hellfire. So how can we not take advantage of this? How can we not be from those who had our sins forgiven? And that's why the dua, and focus on this beautiful dua during these last 10 nights. And say it and repeat it. Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet ﷺ, what should we say? What should we do? And it's an easy dua. But wallah, if we focus on the meaning, it's very deep. It's very beautiful. If we repeat it time and time again, we should feel it in our heart and it should bring tears to our eyes. When he taught her to say, radiallahu anha, when the Prophet ﷺ said, say, say, Allahumma, innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa, fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the afu, the all-forgiving. And from this attribute, what did he say? Tuhibbul afwa. And you love to forgive your Allah. So forgive me. And how much do we need to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who loves to forgive us? We need to beg Allah to forgive us during this blessed month, during these blessed nights in the time that we have left. And as we end the khutbah today, as a reminder, as we said in the beginning, for those of you who didn't hear, that zakat al-fitr. Do not forget, my dear brothers and sisters, to pay zakat al-fitr. Because Eid will either be on the Friday or on the Saturday. And you must pay your zakat al-fitr before the Eid prayer. If you pray it after Eid, it won't be accepted. And the amount for this year here in Qatar is 15 reals per person. 
meaning that you pay for every individual in your house, no matter the ones who you're responsible for. Even if you're responsible for your mother and your father, you pay for them. You pay for every individual, no matter how old or young, male or female, and even from the sunnah that the sahaba used to pay for the janin, for the baby in the womb of the mother. It's not fard, but it's from the sunnah of the sahaba. They would pay for that. So pay for that, inshallah ta'ala, as well, if you can. And make sure you do it on time, and don't mess up your zakat al fitr. Alhamdulillah, as some of the sahaba used to do, it's the sunnah to do it the night before Eid. But some of the sahaba, like Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma, he would pay it two or three days in advance. So there's no problem, inshallah, if you pay it uh, in these days, inshallah, coming up.